Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Katz, switching to my radio voice. And today I have with me Lloyd Peters, Head of Revenue at Send. Uh, Lloyd, thank you for joining me today. How's it going? Yeah, very well, Tony. Uh, nice to be talking to you. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, so we are recording on July 29th, uh, 2024. Uh, I am usually in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta was horrifically hot for the last few weeks i'm currently in my native costa rica uh so a lot nicer down here uh, i'm guessing that london in july is as hot as it ever gets if there is such a thing in the yeah, uk so the weather's actually just turned uh as if, you, if we were doing this podcast last week it would have been gray skies and rainy um but as of today it's sunny and 30 degrees so oh wow very nice oh, wow. celsius so, of course so. okay th th celsius yes so so for our for our uncouth american listeners which are the majority <laughs> uh 30 celsius is like 88 to 90 fahrenheit so that is really really hot for for london yeah so, it's nice in the it's nice in the office we've got the air conditioning okay so so will this last just a few weeks basically and then you go back to a normal dreary london uh, even our even our weather forecast people don't know the weather so i, I am absolutely <laughs> ill-equipped to answer that question all right perfect perfect so we always give the guests the chance to give the elevator pitch what is send so send is uh, an underwriting workbench um and you know we see underwriting teams out there struggling with volumes of submissions um, with lack of structured, rigorous process, um, having to deal with a huge amount of manual data entry and re-entry, throw things over the fence. Um, and all of that is, is inefficient. It's kind of risky because, you know, there's a lack of proactive control and quality assurance in there. And it also means that you're limited as to the quality of decisions that you can make um, because those inefficiencies restrict your ability to spend the time digesting the relevant information you don't have the data available to you to to um drive the necessary insights that you'd want so what is send so send is a single application a single desktop that gives all underwriting teams a single place to work and progress um core underwriting activity through from broker submission all the way through to binding and booking that policy um, in the policy admin system. So it's a single integrated workflow, data storage, document storage, uh, MI and insights, um, all the activities you need in one place, one version of the truth. Okay, one version of the truth, that's very important. Uh, is, it, uh, is it aimed for the Lloyd's market? Or is it aimed um, so for... It's kind of, um, it, it's aimed for... Um, PNC in general and specialty. So yeah, kind of medium, medium, kind of uh, medium commercial upwards. Um, so mid market in the US is kind of where we'd start in terms of um, complexity level. Uh, we don't do personal lines. We don't do personal auto or, or really small business insurance. Um, our origin was in the London market because um, there's a huge amount of specialty, large PNC in London. Um, but we've got customers in the US as well. Um, and, you know, from an underwriting perspective, there's a lot of commonality. I mean, you know, uh, in the underwriting flow, the core flow is the same, the decision making logic's the same, the challenges are really exactly the same across both sides of the pond. Yeah. So what, what was the, the, uh, what, what, what was the underwriting workflow like before SEND? That, act, that that you know uh, inspired you guys to create send. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of your listeners will will have heard or have a lot of experience with um, London market underwriting and underwriting at Lloyd's, and you know, it's got a huge amount of tradition that I I, I won't be able to cover, uh, you know, in uh, in a short session. But you know, I think relationship driven. Um, is a key part. You know, we're extremely condensed here in the city of London. Um, uh, meeting in person and building those individual relationships with your counterparties is a huge, huge factor of doing business in London. Um, and um, 
I think that dynamism of interacting at the box uh, in Lloyd's meant that a lot of things were offline, off, off system, and therefore very manual. Um, and then you pull into uh, into into the equation the complexity of the business, which made it very very difficult to program that and make that into a generic workflow. So all of those factors made that it was extremely manual. It was quite ad hoc. It was quite loosely governed. It was a true kind of um, flexible, dynamic negotiating um, arrangement. Um, so so that's the that's the model that's been in London. Um, and it's still, I think, I know it's pretty true in the US as well. Obviously, generally things are coming through via email, but after that, there's still then quite a lot of bespoke negotiation, bespoke terms being being um, being developed. Okay. Um, g g given the 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 very bespoke nature of, of how the the uh, how underwriting historic has been done in the middle market and in, in the specialty space uh in order to bring in a, a workbench do we do we have to significantly change our processes or how does how does it fit fit the existing processes uh yeah good question and i i think the answer is a bit of both there's always going to be a bit of um a bit of business change um needed so i think we we try and drive the right balance between driving commonality into your business where there should be commonality um, and then driving you know specific specification to different lines where there needs to be so if you think about commonality um, the overall major stage gates of your underwriting process you know whether that's going to be your intake your triage your clearance your clash checks risk assessment quote bind they're going to be pretty consistent across all of your lines um, and certain take on procedures, your KYC procedures, how you manage your wordings, all of that, again, is going to be relatively consistent. So driving that consistency gives team leaders and uh, business leaders clarity on MI, um, good visibility of how business is progressing, and lets you drive you know, cost effective um, efficiencies into the business. But on the flip side, you know, all lines are ensuring different things. There's different parameters that you need to identify good and bad risks and drive into your rating um, engine. Um, so those are the areas where you're going to want to drive differences. Um, and, and pulling that balance of the two is, is what we try and do at Send. Yeah. Looking at the website, it, it looks like you guys do both uh, carriers, insurers, and also MGAs. Um, so... Uh, from from the from the submission process, the workbench, and then you had you had you hadn't mentioned this part, but the, the delegated underwriting authority, which is very important when the MGAs uh, play play in the sandbox too. Uh, so so how how do, how does the uh, delegated authority piece work? Yeah, so um, we've got delegated functionality on kind of both sides of the coin, as it were. Um, so if you're the capacity provider. Um, writing binding authorities, giving other people, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the pen, um, then we have the ability to set up those cover holder arrangements, set up those binding authorities, and then receive inbound Bordereau um, to report what's been written on your behalf. And then we have functionality on the other side of the fence as well, which is, as you say, MGA functionality, which allows you to set up that binder, write business to that binder, and then report that back to the capacity provider. Um, and th the big benefit of this, of course, is that you can do that in the same system as you're managing your open market business. So, you know, most businesses are going to have some blend of this. They're going to be writing a lot of business on the binders, but they're also going to be writing uh, open market business. Um, and when those two things are separate, it's pretty difficult to understand kind of your overall exposure. Uh, you know, you might be writing lots of things with the same clients across your binders as you are in the open market um but you just don't have the ability to kind of interrogate that data and, and see that trend yeah, so, it, so it gives you kind of an integrated visibility of all of the business you're writing regardless of which channel uh yeah yeah exactly yeah okay 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 so it looks like on on both sides on on the insurer side and on the mga side 
there's kind of a standard version and then you can add some some premium components so it looks like like a bit of a modular design yeah so i, I think that the heart of send is two things we've got um our kind of middleware layer which is our proprietary you know insurance specific um integration and configuration engine which is called send connect and that controls everything that happens within the platform, but then also controls all of the data exchange and integrations without of the platform. And then you have the core workbench on top of it. And that is the kind of um, workflow engine, the data model, the document storage, the task management, the notes. So all of the consistent kind of operational good practice items that you're going to need no matter what you're doing. Um, they're all built for insurance. Um, and that's what you get no matter how you want to use send. And then as you say, then you can choose how you want to use send. So you can use it as a classic carrier and that's our kind of core workbench. If you're an MGA, then you, you add on those kind of binder flavors and that, and that border reporting flavor. And then you can add on the cover holder setup if you're on the, um, if you're on the capacity provider side. Okay. Um, wh where do we have to be when it comes to, to our technology journey? Uh, or a transformation journey in order to be able to to bring this in do we already uh, have to be on on like a guide wire type platform or or yeah what, what what do we have to look like to to be able to bring this in what's the implementation uh, like we we've had um we've had customers at all stages right so we we talk about different underwriting maturity models where we kind of start at zero which is like full manual underwriting and we go to digital and then we go to connected and then we go to augmented and then up to smart, which is the kind of Nirvana that everyone's trying to trying to work towards. So we've had customers um, who are very much in the zero. They may have smatterings of systems, but their core underwriting is still very spreadsheet driven, very uh, email outlook managed. Um, and um, so for them, even just getting to a really solid digital base with a you know, an application driven workbench uh, that they can start building things on is, is, is a, a really powerful first step. And then we've got other customers who are pretty advanced with their technology. Um, they have a good policy admin system. They're using that with integrated rating, but the speed of change or the user interface of that or the connectivity of that is not what they need it to be. Um, and so, you know, Send can act as that kind of single unifying layer that can orchestrate all of their different systems in one convenient place. So, you know, if you take Send, it's not about having Send for everything. We're not a kind of monolith system. We're really an ecosystem orchestrator. So our, our position is to be the, the, the spine of your underwriting flow. So if that means you've already spent 10 million configuring forms in a particular tool, we're not saying you have to throw that away, right? We can work with that. If you've got a proprietary AI model that does some analysis in one of your lines, you don't have to throw that away. We'll API that and we'll pull that into the journey. Um, and the same is true kind of all the way through the value chain. All right. Um, so on, on the website, I see the, the underwriting maturity framework, which is a downloadable uh, white paper type thing. Uh, so that's basically a self self assessment to help me figure out where I am. Where, where... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it can be used for a number of different ways. Um, you know, I think it can be used to self assess and have a bit of a, a pragmatic view of where are we. Um, it can also help you think about what good looks like and where you might might want to get to. So that kind of target state vision. Um, I think it's also extremely important for helping you set out a roadmap of change. Um, we can't jump from, you know, A to Z. Um, I'm also translating the alphabet there for the American listeners, A to Z in, in, in English speak. Um, you, you need to build up through some of these phases or at least understand how, how you need to navigate that from a, from a business change. So being able to, to shape that, that roadmap is really important. So the, the, the phrase that I always use, uh, I don't know where I first heard it, but I really, really like it is uh, think big, start small, act fast. And hopefully that underwriting maturity model helps you do exactly that. 
right? You can look at where the end state is and you go, God, how powerful it's going to be if I can leverage Gen AI to do that. Um, but in order to do that, I need this data and I need this data with this quality. And I need to have understood how decisions are made against that data. Um, and I need to have the controls and the trust to be able to unleash that AI. So that's kind of where we're getting right up to the smart. And then you kind of can work your way back and say, right, well, if these are the things I need to get to that point, then here's what I need to deliver now to help my business, but also to build towards what I want to be in three, four years time. What? What what is composable technology? That's that's the first time I see I see that. I think it's component driven, right? It's it's you can you know pull together. You don't have to take every single different action. Um, so so we've got you know a series of underlying components that are, that sit across everything. I've I've rattled those off already. That's kind of you know the the the, the workflow, the document storage, and then we've got a series of activity specific components or modules um so these are things like your, your class check your um, sanctions check your financial crime check your rating your um your you're know, adding fact uh to your property risk so there's all these insurance specific activities there's you know 20 30 of them um that can form your workflow um so we can assemble this workflow to fit the line of business to fit the customer um to fit the geography right so we don't come and we say right here's our set workflow and it's a uh, linear one two three four five and that's the way you work and if you don't work that way then either it's going to be a massively problematic change journey or you're going to have to customize the hell out of it um that's what we mean by that composable you can build you can really compose what you want perfect perfect uh, what what is the pricing like? I mean, obviously, really bespoke because there's so many different ways to put it together. But what 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 is the pricing like compared to the rest of the market? Yeah, so um, I think you look at the market. There's kind of two ends of the spectrum. You've got the build where people are doing these days. It's more low code build um, at, rather than like true kind of kind of .NET ground up coding. Uh, and then you've got buy. Um, and so you're looking at the big, you know, major policy admin systems, which kind of really started in the post bind space and then trying to leverage the workflows to kind of move earlier on. Um, so I think the profile that we'll sit is we sit in between those. So our proposition is that, you know, you buy the platform, um, which gives you a load of out of the box functionality you can leverage and you can, you can use it out of the box pretty quickly. Um, it's pretty much working as a functional workbench, but then you can do all the build in the areas that differentiate you. So, um, so the build aspect can be as big as your ambition, because as big as you want it to be, it doesn't have to be very big. Um, so we sit in between of those two pricing, right? We're substantially cheaper than um, the big policy admin systems um, from a license perspective, um, and I uh, and. Yeah, and and then we're so we're we're not overly expensive. Yeah, right. What what are the clients saying? Like, what what kind of feedback are, are you are you getting us to the ROI of, of uh, moving over to to send? I think the ROI builds through that underwriting maturity journey. Um, so I think a lot of the first ROI that people see is in the operational uh, areas, right? So yeah, one of our customers their main pain point or their main focus before um, working with us was that lack of transparency, that lack of trust of how their teams were working, um, what business was being done and how, and they wanted to scale. They wanted their big growth ambitions, but they were like, well, how can we trust ourselves to scale when we don't even know how our teams are collaborating, what business we're writing, whether we're writing it with the right controls. So for them, the big ROI was having the confidence to be able to scale their business um then the next logical step is clear efficiencies right we really cut down on the time that people are taking to do manual entry um and then you build through into right now i've ticked those good boxes off now i really start to drive the use of data and start to drive kind of loss ratio improvements through better automated triage through better risk assessment through better pricing optimization um 
So yeah, the, the, the there's all sort of different types of ROI to both top line, bottom line that that you can start to drive out of it. All right. Uh, what, what I'm always curious on on the origin story. How, how did you guys realize this was a need, and and how did you the, did you realize you were the right the right people to build? It? I do realize that you're uh, you you probably haven't been around the company for the whole time it's been around. But yeah, what 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 is the origin story? Yeah, so it's um uh we have three co-founders um who uh were all kind of long-standing technology uh change people in the insurance market um uh and uh they essentially got frustrated with the lack of data transfer right and uh the inability of companies to to exchange information freely and so they built what I referenced earlier is our integration hub, which is Send Connect. So they built this API data exchange, um, and you know the story goes that they, that was great, but the problem was that carriers didn't really have the application layer of the top of it to be able to interact with that data exchange layer, and so they built one, um, which was the Workbench. So that was kind of the origins, really, um, and then it's gone from strength to strength. We you know started working with um, some big UK customers. Um, so, you know, started fleshing that out. Um, and then, uh, we, you know, several years ago now expanded over to the U S and we've got, uh, you know, a number of customers there, um, doing some really exciting things. Perfect. Uh, this episode will likely go live on uh, September 9th, middle of September. Uh, and I, I gave you that information because I'm curious, are there any, uh, new features that are coming down the, 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 uh, plan uh, or the, the roadmap that you can already talk about. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the big things that we're working on at the moment, put a lot of time into um, is adding depth and breadth to our self-service configuration functionality. So loads and loads of the platform config is now available via low code, no code. Um, so that, you know, speeds up the delivery, gives control. Um, we've got... Uh, so a really good uh, 0365 uh, integration coming up that's going to give people a huge amount of control over their Excel-based macro-enabled rating models um, so they can self-serve those and integrate those directly. That's pretty powerful. Um, we've got a brand new version of our document generation capability, uh, lots of new uh, functionality around that as well. So dynamically adding uh, endorsements and forms uh, building out binder documents, quote documents, all of that can be done really easily. Um, so yeah, the, and I'm sure I've missed lots. I'm sure my chief product officer will, will tell me off tomorrow for forgetting some stuff. But look, there, there, there's a there's a long roadmap of change. There's there's cool new stuff being dropped every month. To be honest with you, yeah, it's exciting. That is fantastic. And for the listeners, the the website is send technology. And I will include that on the show notes. Uh, Lloyd, uh, Lloyd, thank you for your time today. This has been super interesting. Uh, when this goes live, I will tag both you and the company on LinkedIn. Uh, and yeah, for the listeners, if uh, you're looking for an underwriting workbench or any of the other myriad of of options we, we talked about, uh, go check out Send.Technology. Thanks, Sonny. Anytime. Thank you.